I'd like to discuss some collet plate brackets from the Rogers Covington era and piggyback off a study that my friend Rick Giles did a while back that I found fascinating. I hope you enjoy a bit of an analysis. But first, let's take a look at the collet plates used in that era, of which there were five. The 310, a straight mount, used on ride toms and center mounted on bass drums. The 312, which is a short angle mount, suitable for left or right, slightly off-center mounting. The 311, which is an angle mount, suitable for left or right side installation when a bracket is required to be lower on the bass drum, for example, a cymbal arm or a tom arm on, say, a starlighter or a celebrity. Then there are two plates specifically for bass drum spurs, the 338 for the 20-inch bass drum and the 340 for the 22-inch bass drum. Now let's take a look at some of the changes that occurred to these plates through the Covington years. The first thing I'll mention is something I noticed long ago and was confirmed by my friend Bobby at Jollity Drum Farm, and that's that on the earliest plates, Rogers is stamped quite a bit higher than it is on the slightly later plates. And also on some of the earliest plates, you'll find only two holes for mounting hardware. I've also seen this version where the thread stops and then starts again at the bottom of the fingers. I unfortunately don't have much information on this version and would love to learn more about it if possible. But the biggest change is best presented by this graphic that appeared in the 59R and 60R catalog but was gone by the 62R catalog. It demonstrates how Rogers intended for the corners of the hex rod to go against the fingers and not the spaces in between. This version is easily identifiable by the V-shaped cutouts in the fingers where the corners of the hex rod were intended to fit. You can literally see the shape of the hex within the fingers, and that shape continues all the way through the unit, assuring that the rod can only fit one way. Here's a look at the version that most are more accustomed to where the hex corners fit in the spaces. When seen back to back, the difference is quite clear. Here's a look at the original design in use with the hex corners fitting against the fingers. When attempting to put the rod in the way most are accustomed to, it won't budge. But with a slight turn, it falls right into place. This hex shape that continues all the way through the unit is what assured that the rod could only enter one way, and actually remains present in the early versions of the design change plate where the corners of the hex rod fit in the spaces of the collet. Over time, the hex on the back side of the plate becomes less prominent and then eventually is completely gone. I have to assume Rogers abandoned the original design due to user error and confusion and replaced it with the design seen here that we're all accustomed to. The collet noses that tension the fingers and hold the rods into place is another topic altogether. The original versions were machined steel and the later Fullerton versions were cast which would split and not hold tension. A man named Steve Ellis currently machines high-grade steel reproductions of the original collet nose. I'll put his contact info at the end of this video. His pieces are high quality. When buying collet plate brackets on the internet, it's important to understand which piece you need and not rely on what a possible uninformed seller might say they have. For example, it would be unfortunate to end up with a 338 when what you need is a 312. Your best bet is always to stick with reputable Rogers sellers. I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. Thanks for watching.